Good morning to all. I would like to welcome you to this ses session uh, uh, that is entitled uh, Leadership uh, Imper Imperative Making Reforms Work. I am from Sky News and I am Mohanna Al Khatib and this session is organized uh, uh, by Sky News and uh, WEF. I have been working on uh, this uh, topic since uh, 2004 and 2005, uh, and uh, this term has always been used in all the sessions that I used to work on as of that time. We talk about uh, reforms, we're talking about governments, uh, we're talking about reforms when we're talking about uh, political parties. So the term uh, reform is always uh, part and parcel of uh, the sessions that I used to cover. Unfortunately, the effective, uh, successful um, reform uh, experiences are limited uh, in uh, the MENA region. And today, we would like to understand uh, the reasons uh, for uh, the limited number of uh, such successful uh, experiences. What are the keys for their success? What are the tools required for any reform to work out in the social, educational, or political uh, realms. Today, we will be talking about this issue, given the fact that there are uh, always uh, new changes, complications, uh, uh, not necessarily in our part of the world only, but throughout the world, we have a fourth uh, digital um, uh, revolution or industrial um, revolution. Uh, we are having uh, new forms of technology and communications and uh, a new uh, relationship between the citizen and the state. Uh, we have an excellent uh, group of panelists to focus on this issue. I would like to welcome Mr. Mahdi Juma, who is the leader of, uh, or the ex-leader of the ex-government, and he is uh, a minister in uh, Tunisia, and he's working on setting up uh, the Tunisian uh, Alternative Party in Tunisia. I would, uh, would also like to welcome Abdel Salem Abu Shuarib, and he is the Minister of um, Industry and Mines of Algeria. We'd like to welcome you, sir. From the private sector, we have Mr. Mohammed Samir, who is the President of India, Middle East, and Africa from Procter and Gamble. As for uh, the organizational matters, uh, we'll give 10 minutes for each speaker, and then uh, we will um, discuss uh, some issues with the panelists before opening the floor to the audience. Um, welcome to all of you. Uh, sir, I will uh, kick off with you. As you have uh, said, reform is a word that is uh, very fashionable and the most problematic issue in our region is that for uh, that we wait for such a long time before we talk about reform and then uh, reform uh, uh, becomes uh, a de facto thing that we have to adopt uh, however uh, a best a better way to deal with reform is to have it on an ongoing basis. Uh, in the international community, we find that uh, those uh, societies that succeeded in uh, reforms uh, are those societies that had a process uh, for reform. And we know when uh, we talk about reform, there is always a loser and a winner. And that's why it needs a lot of political courage to undertake. So if we look uh, at uh, the uh, at reform in the uh, future, we need to make sure that it succeeds, um, and that's why. And we have had an experience in uh, Tunisia when it came to reform, and we succeeded in some areas. And the reason for those uh, successes were uh, an in-depth uh, study, uh, assessment uh, of uh, the losers and the winners. Um, and we were able uh, to adapt, uh, adopt uh, implementation uh, mechanisms to allow all uh, players to come out in a win-win situation uh, ultimately. So what is important is how to interpret, how to promote, and how to communicate uh, reform in order for everyone to feel uh, that they are uh, winners. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, a practical example, which is energy, reform in energy. We have done that in 2014 in Tunisia. 
What was important for us is that we held an in-depth uh, study, uh, sector by sector, and we uh, covered uh, public uh, consumption, uh, industrial uh, consumption, uh, uh, private consumption, and we studied uh, the impact, uh, uh, the cost impact, uh, the impact on the purchasing power in each and every sector. And we tried to go back uh, to the basic idea for uh, subsidies. We know that subsidies are there to subsidize the purchasing power of uh, the people. And uh, we discovered that it was a um, support uh, for the product. Uh, and uh, we might have uh, the same thing uh, in the energy sector. Uh, uh, but uh, they were uh, they, the government was supporting uh, the energy for uh, consumers who were not um, apt to receive uh, such uh, a support uh, and we um, sort of uh, diverted from the original idea of uh, supporting uh, the product uh, for the needy people that's why we studied it uh, product by product and we needed to uh, explain uh, the need to have uh, reform we explained it to all uh, the involved of the uh, parties, all stakeholders, uh, to be uh, to buy them over, to win them over. It took us uh, several years of uh, promotion, uh, and uh, we were able uh, uh, to um, anticipate uh, the bad uh, reactions. Uh, but uh, sometimes we needed to be very bold and just carry through our reforms. How, uh, what was the initial subsidy to the uh, electricity or to the power energy? It was uh, based on a policy to encourage a specific uh, form of industry. And uh, after a while, uh, there was a deviation from that main objective. That's why we needed to analyze the situation and uh, to deal with the various uh, stakeholders. Uh, in order for us to have a win-win situation, we were aware that when we were uh, supporting um, gas, electricity, and um, other uh, energy, uh, we needed to set up uh, the energy transform uh, fund in order uh, to find uh, sufficient uh, investment for energy sufficiency and in order uh, <clears throat> for us uh, to increase the available tools uh, to deal with the new situation. We realized that reform is a necessity and that uh, we cannot wait for 20 years uh, for a problem to become a real, real uh, a deep problem before reform is undertaken. That's why we started uh, to study the need to have reform and we had a good te uh, communication technology to, to convince the others of uh, the need to have reform. Another uh, point. Those who are really uh, afraid of uh, reform are the decision makers in the political uh, realms. While uh, the people uh, are much more ahead of the politicians and their leaders in terms of acceptance of uh, reform, some people are uh, afraid of reforms, uh, but later on uh, and on the basis of transparency, they accept them because they feel that they are uh, owners of the reform, that they are part of uh, the need to uh, adopt this uh, new technology. This applies, uh, hopefully, to the digital uh, technology. We know that it is very important to serve the digital uh, sector, and uh, we don't want to wait uh, five to ten uh, years before we reform that uh, sector. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency. I would like uh, to ask you about other issues later on. Uh, you are considered for us uh, uh, an excellent uh, glimmer of hope uh, in uh, the region. Uh, given uh, the Arab Spring, uh, you are an excellent um, uh, example. You have talked about lifting uh, subsidies, uh, and we know that uh, people are very um, unhappy about the lifting of those uh, subsidies. How can you, how were you able to convince the people of uh, giving up uh, subsidies to uh, basic uh, services? Uh, I will uh, come back to this issue later on, uh, sir. But let me turn to Mr. Mohammed Samir. Uh, 
uh, who is from uh, the private sector, uh, Procter and uh, Gamble. Uh, sir, what do you think of the private sector? Uh, how does the private sector accept reform? Is reform restricted to the public sector? Is the government uh, the uh, protector and implementer of uh, reform? Or are there uh, partnerships uh, between the government and uh, the private sector and the community at large? What is your experience? What do you think? Good morning. I prefer the use uh, facilitation and improvement because the word uh, reform is reform uh, when uh, something is completely broken. Well, sir, things are broken sometimes. Mr. Uh, Muhammad, yes, uh, those, uh, if things are completely uh, broken, then they, we will not find new investments. I want to focus on the positive side. Uh, this is a huge market and uh, we, there are uh, huge numbers of uh, people under the age of uh, 25, and the future is very bright. Uh, so let's focus on this, those two terms, improve, improvement uh, and uh, facilitation. Um, uh, we're talking about regional integration, uh, economic uh, and commercial uh, integration. Less than 10% of uh, trade, intra-trade, uh, is taking place in uh, the Arab region or in the MENA region, while in Europe it is 60% uh, when we talk about intra-trade. And this is very important when it comes to job opportunities. Uh, we need to have uh, funds uh, to... Uh, uh, expand on education. And this can happen if we have integration. And we have to think out of the box when we talk about uh, regional integration. For example, if we have a factory, and we have an example from our company. We have various uh, factories in the region, and we employ around 5,000 uh, employees. Our distributors have uh, 50,000 employers. Uh, employees, sorry. And uh, they don't have uh, factors. Who have created more job opportunities? Uh, production or distribution? Uh, usually governments focus on uh, man uh, manufacturing or industry. What is the uh, main objective? It is to create uh, jobs. So we should also focus on distribution, not only production or industry. There are always uh, laws and regulations that are based on confidence uh, and we and new laws should not uh, be promulgated on the basis of uh, um, doubting uh, companies and feeling that companies might fall into mistakes uh, and that's why uh, we uh, promulgate new date uh, laws in order to avoid uh, such mistakes well we need the government to trust us even if we make mistakes uh, we will learn and then you can um, um, establish uh, or set up new laws as the government to deal with these issues uh, another issue is uh, surprises uh, uh, there should be a continuous uh, ongoing uh, discussion between the government and the private sector uh, the private sector does not like surprises uh, the only surprise that I like is on my birthday <laughs> I don't like to be surprised uh, when it comes to business uh, because uh, when we're taken um, unawares, we will react uh, in uh an uncareful and unstudied manner. We don't want surprises. Uh, yet another point that is important, uh, and sir, you have mentioned it, uh, we are working uh, for the sake of the peoples, uh, the consumers. Um, so when the, we talk uh, between, amongst us, the private and the public sector, we need to focus on how to raise the standard of living of the consumers, of the people. Uh, we know that companies aim uh, at making profit, but at the same time, if the companies do not raise uh, the standard of living of people, they will not be able to continue. So this dialogue should be focused on uh, satisfying consumers. Those were the points that I needed to, to present to you. The most important amongst them, however, was regional integration, uh, economic and uh, commercial uh, integration. I have mentioned the uh, factor factories and uh, production and distribution and compared the figures. But if we uh, apply this on the digital economy, in the past uh, uh, there was talk about uh, robots uh, taking over employees or uh, laborers. Now robots are going to take over our thinking as well. So there will be less uh, jobs and we need to deal with this issue and focus on it. Uh, that's why I focus on regional integration. The moderator.
Uh, yes, to have an enabling uh, environment uh, for investment and uh, business uh, is uh, something that needs to be worked on in our region. According to statistics, the MENA region, in average, are uh, on the rank uh, 114 uh, at the international level in terms of uh, conducting business. Uh, can you imagine that we figure uh, on the rank uh, 114th when it comes to this uh, to these business transactions as a result of all the constraints? Uh, uh, of course, the UAE uh, ranked 31, not uh, 114, in terms of uh, facility of um, undertaking commercial activities and setting up corporations. I'll turn back to you, sir, uh, on this issue later on. Let me turn now to Mr. Bouchwarib. Sir, maybe you can tell us about the first and second generations of uh, reform that we have uh, discussed a short while ago. Mr. Bouchwarib, thank you for giving me the uh, opportunity to present to you the uh, Algerian uh, case. Uh, Reforms are not an option. Uh, they are fatal. They are a fatal necessity because uh, the international swift and uh, deep uh, uh, radical changes uh, in the world have forced us uh, to uh, conduct uh, reforms to be able uh, to uh, deal with the new developments. Um, so let me uh, focus on this issue from another angle. Algeria f has lived its uh, spring uh, towards the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s of the last century. And we came up uh, with uh, uh, an in-depth uh, reform, uh, political reform, and uh, we adopted the uh, pluralism, following which uh, we uh, lived, uh, lived uh, the dark decade, and then uh, Sayyid Abdelaziz Bouteflika assumed power, and we kicked off uh, the second generation uh, reforms. The second generation reforms uh, allowed us uh, to adapt uh, all uh, the current uh, laws with international laws. In 2014, uh, I joined the cabinet and I uh, assessed uh, some of the laws that were there as of the communist regime, uh, or sorry, socialist regime. And uh, the, those laws were uh, not uh, in line with international uh, economy. That's why we changed uh, the law on investment. And now our law on investment is a pioneer uh, law that is considered as such by the IMF and the World Bank. We have also changed uh, all the financial uh, regulations and laws over the years in order uh, to improve uh, investment and to allow uh, enterprises and corporations uh, to produce and to be sustainable. We have all the, also uh, amended uh, the uh, several laws related to competitive competition, which enabled um, Algerian uh, products to be competitive at the international uh, markets. Uh, today, we are talking about uh, youth and creativity of the youth. Uh, they will also continue to be creative. Uh, that's why uh, we needed to reform the law on SMEs. And uh, these two, the startups uh, were created. Uh, startups in the past were incapable of uh, setting themselves up because of the old banking laws and regulations. That's why we were able to create uh, new funds and new laws actual new laws that enabled new funds to be set up to finance those SMEs and the startups. That package of reforms was undertaken. And going back to the energy sector, the transition that we have passed through in the energy sector and that everybody is going through in the energy sector, particularly in our region, where 50% of uh, our uh, oil and gas reserves are uh, being used up. 
Europe. Uh, um, and uh, in spite of uh, this, uh, the prices are uh, going down and we are going through an uh, economic crisis. That's why in Algeria we set up a program uh, to produce uh, 22 uh, million uh, uh, megawatts, sorry, and uh, we're able uh, to produce uh, 4,500 megawatt. Uh, we hope that we'll do so by the year 2025. Uh, and uh, reforms are going to take place in the social arena, and we have already started in that, uh, on that uh, path to improve uh, the situation of the people. And this means that our internal consumption will go up. We know that we have limited uh, production capacities. That's why we needed to uh, find alternative uh, sources of energy to achieve uh, our objectives. Uh, my final comment uh, on this uh, first uh, round of questions is the following. We have to look at reforms as a necessity, as an obligation. They are fatal. We cannot uh, escape them in order to uh, be part and parcel of international uh, cutthroat uh, competition. Uh, when I talked about the popularity, uh, when you talked about the popularity of reforms, we know that uh, if uh, the people are not aware and do not understand what uh, reform is all about, we will face problems. In Algeria, w uh, Algeria, we just had uh, an electoral uh, campaign, and uh, the result was uh, pluralism. And uh, uh, this is the fifth year and uh, of this pluralism. And uh, I also launched my own uh, electoral uh, campaign, and I realized that the people were fully aware that uh, uh, subsidies uh, throughout uh, the sectors of uh, the society is unacce are unacceptable. And they understood that there was a need to get rid of those subsidies. And as Mahdi Juma has said, uh, we were able to uh, raise the awareness in order to reduce uh, those subsidies in the energy sector in particular and in other sectors as well. And we hope to do more in the future. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Minister. Yes, indeed, I have a set of questions that I would like to ask you. But I would also leave the floor to the audience. However, let me ask the following. When we talk about reform, we think of economic reform. Some people believe that reforms is a full-fledged concept that covers all aspects of life, headed by political reforms. People want to have more participation. They want to feel that they belong to the decision-making process of the, a given country. Up to what extent do you believe that political reform is uh, important? And is it possible to have only an economic reform and a developed state uh, while uh, the uh, regime, uh, the political regime is old-fashioned? Is this possible? Uh, I think that we cannot uh, have uh, one part of reform without the other uh, part of reform. Uh, social and economic reforms uh, go hand in hand. Uh, in Tunisia, we have undertaken a political reform in a very uh, fast-faced manner. In, we uh, reformulated or redrafted our uh, constitution. At the same time, we were conducting our economic reforms. Uh, if uh, there are no economic reforms, there would be no pressure on uh, the uh, political reforms. Our economic reforms are still young, uh, and we need uh, to supplement uh, them in order to strengthen them or else we will not continue to have uh, overall uh, reforms. Of course, this is our uh, experience, and every country has its own specificities. Let's look at China. They had a huge economic uh, transformation and reforms, while at the political uh, uh, level, it was very gradual. So each country has its own uh, specific conditions. Uh, what is uh, important is to have a social development. Uh, social development uh, covers all aspects. Uh, the economic, the political, uh, the social. Otherwise, uh, it will not be an, uh, a, a, a balanced experience. Um, it will be very risky. Coming back to reforms, we need to understand one thing. Uh, 
at uh, present. Uh, we don't have uh, a, a limited ecosystem. Uh, even if we close our borders, our borders are still open and everyone is connected. Uh, in terms of uh, communication and globalization, which means that the competition is at the international uh, level. And we are part of this open uh, competition. We cannot uh, keep any balance without uh, reforms. Our reforms will enable us to conduct reforms uh, internally and uh, become uh, more at ease uh, uh, to be able to participate in this open competition. And it is very important to understand that reform is an opportunity. It is an opportunity. It uh, has a transformation carried within it. It has uh, opportunities and investment uh, involved uh, in it. And uh, reform uh, leads to creation of wealth. Let me go back to the initial idea. We should not uh, uh, have a very hasty political reform. We need to have uh, uh, political and economic reforms going hand in hand. Participation is something that we cannot uh, avoid in the Arab world. It is unescapable. We cannot have a, uh, an absolute decision coming from the top uh, to the bottom. Uh, ref this, of course, has its positive and negative aspects. Uh, reforms uh, take their course. Uh, they take their time. Uh, before uh, undertaking our uh, reforms, uh, we had held uh, uh, economic uh, dialogue uh, involving the private sector, uh, the trade union, the opposition leaders, and it took us some time to prepare everyone for reforms. Um, uh, this, of course, does not mean that we stop a decision-making process. Uh, yeah, participation uh, is uh, uh, something that is uh, positive uh, because uh, it will increase the feeling of ownership uh, by, uh, the, oh, by the citizens. But there is another important thing, which is citizenship. Citizenship is not only rights. It is also obligations. So if there is a reform that is taking place, uh, uh, citizens uh, uh, become main stakeholders, main actors uh, in the reform. And uh, they will have the rights and duties. And uh, only then we'll be able to speed up uh, reforms and uh, lessen uh, their uh, risks. Uh, Procter and & Gamble and other uh, international corporations, when they think of uh, introducing investment in new uh, regions, they think foremostly of uh, stability, economic, uh, security, political stability. Sir, uh, uh, Mr. Samir, what do you think? Yes, of course, indeed, indeed, stability is very important. The question, does it come from uh, politics or from economics? Uh, I uh, think... Uh, if you have a person uh, who does not have uh, uh, food on his table, is he going to think of uh, politics? No, he will think of economy. So economy is very important. And when uh, economy is based on uh, solid foundations, uh, then uh, people uh, will uh, be in a better situation. And uh, then we can talk to them about politics or digital or any other thing, any other matter. I think that uh, economic Economy is very important. I will not touch upon uh, politics because I'm not interested in politics. Uh, Mohammed, yes, yes, we're not touching upon politics. Mr. Uh, Mohammed Samir, yes, uh, the consumer uh, is our of, is our prime importance. Uh, of course, uh, they have political problems, but I think that uh, their economic uh, needs uh, are uh, uh, more important, uh, given um, on the basis of the very well-known pyramid. Uh, Your Excellency, the Minister uh, Bushwareb, what do you think? We cannot uh, I think uh, dealing uh, political uh, uh, reforms from uh, economic uh, uh, reforms. Uh, stability indeed is the cornerstone for any political or economic policy. And I live, uh, I say this out of uh, the experience that we have lived uh, in Algeria. The resumption of security and stability in Algeria was something quite difficult to achieve, but uh, uh, due to the um, uh, 
uh, reasoning uh, and uh, the wisdom of our uh, president, we were able to achieve this uh, stability. Now, the second uh, generation uh, reforms uh, were uh, political, and we redrafted the constitution. And this uh, new constitution has entrenched and deepened uh, uh, pluralism uh, and pluralistic uh, democracy and calm uh, democracy or quiet democracy. The same constitution enabled us to have uh, economic transition. And this is the very first time that we have such a constitution in uh, uh, Algeria, a constitution that described our economy as a free economy of a social uh, nature. We came out of the old economic uh, regime with a new constitution that enabled us uh, to um, enact all the other uh, laws that I have mentioned. And more are uh, to come. More laws are to come. We need uh, the legal uh, background, uh, the legal uh, rules uh, to enable us to have this social uh, and economic uh, development. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mahdi Jum'a talked about something, um, and it is uh, something that has been uh, proven also in Algeria. Uh, we have uh, held uh, dialogues with uh, the trade unions as well as with the employers, and we were able to come up with a social contract uh, concluded uh, amongst all uh, stakeholders on the basis of specific goals uh, based on agreement amongst uh, those uh, parties. And in that social contract, we were able to arrange or lay out all uh, reform objectives. There was a sort of um, an acceptance, overall acceptance uh, of uh, or consensus over uh, those uh, reforms, uh, which uh, proves that our citizens are uh, convinced that there is a need for those uh, reforms. Um, otherwise, they will not be able uh, to uh, have an uh, uh, to raise. The their standard of living. Uh, they understood that uh, the subsidies given to uh, the loaf, to bread, uh, were also important to be lifted. And um, all uh, stakeholders agreed uh, on uh, those focal points uh, in order, and that enabled us uh, to implement uh, those uh, points of agreement uh, on the ground. This is something that uh, will enable us uh, to speed up uh, further uh, reforms. Reforms, as we know, is not uh, a pinpointed effort or an effort, a one-time effort. It is an ongoing process. We know that international economy uh, continues to develop and grow, and uh, there is talk about the fourth uh, industrial uh, revolution. Uh, there were the three revolutions that came before before that, uh, and I think that this fourth revolution would lead to speedier reforms and uh, speedier developments, and there will be more bridges uh, to uh, gap. That's why we be very flexible in order for our laws uh, to adapt uh, with uh, these uh, new developments um, that are lived on the ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, the political uh, reforms uh, should also adapt uh, themselves in order to be in line with the uh, economical uh, reforms uh, and with the international developments. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt that the reform process is a continuous one, but however, the citizen on its part needs to, uh, uh, needs to feel uh, the gains of this reform if the process is infinite uh, but the citizens never feel any benefit from it, This w there would be a problem and there would be a, a flaw in how the process is carried out. I would like to take a few questions uh, from the audience about anything related to reforms, the challenges that face the reform process. Go ahead, sir. The private sector is part of is professional as and is for profit. However, uh, investment promotion laws in Tunisia and Algeria uh, have elements of uh, 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 risk insurance. Do they have any elements of risk insurance, maybe, uh, to reassure investors and to attract a more uh, a higher level of uh, investment? 
Thank you. I'm glad that you have uh, tackled this aspect. Uh, the new investment law in Algeria, which is today, uh, I cannot, of course, go into the details of that law, but uh, it is uh, a law which has been recognized uh, by all institutions. However, this is also uh, did not come uh, um, suddenly. It not was. Uh, it was not a product of the moment. It was rather uh, improvements introduced uh, to improve the investment cl uh, climate. When we have our, uh, when we have foreign and local investors, and uh, we feel uh, what they need, uh, we introduce improvements. I have. Uh, uh, introduced 33 improvements uh, in the laws. And this is all related to knowing uh, what goes on in the field and the problems that uh, are faced in the field. Uh, maybe uh, investment law is not uh, um, up to the level that's expected by companies, but we are constant communication with our partners uh, in order to do that, because the uh, um, our partners are the vectors that are going to allow me achieve my po uh, economic uh, uh, objectives, uh, which is diversification of the economy of my country and also creating other sources for uh, uh, creating a permanent, uh, a strong, uh, accumulation cumulative wealth that would uh, improve the economy. This allows me and enables me and forces me to listen to all uh, the companies uh, because they are the heart of uh, the economy. Mr. Mohammed, you are the one, uh, Mr. Mohammed Samir, you talk always about the importance of good legislative environment, especially for major for uh, companies, uh, what you call good regulation. I would like to listen to you some explanation about this and to what extent uh, this is uh, fundamental for any company such as Procter & Gamble when it thinks of investing and moving into a certain uh, geographic region. Well, good, inv uh, good uh, 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 regulation and legislation is uh, are important, but also their implementation. The regulations and uh, legislation is a, a first step. But uh, this is these are all important because I'm going to work in a new market. So I need to understand what are my duties, what are my obligations, what are my rights in uh, concepts that are simplified, clear, uh, and ambiguous, where it has all that we have learned from the other areas in the world. For example, there are standards uh, that are present in the US and Europe. We would uh, 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 review them and see what would be suitable to implement in our own uh, uh, area. We don't need to reinvent uh, this legislation. We need to save time and go into copy, copy and uh, uh, implement, emulate. Uh, so the implementation is the other point. I could say, for example, uh, I could say so many good things, but at the end of the day, the worker at the plant in Egypt, is he going to do the things that I am talking about? It's very important in implementation. Simplification is uh, also important because uh, in uh, companies we have something also uh, also have to call self regulation someone the consumer at the end of the day is the one who is going to decide consumers will purchase whatever goods they feel is uh, suitable to them they don't want to be tricked by other uh, they would purchase things that ha are uh, that uh, fit certain specifications uh, let me say for example example, if you have a new company, is a new company, and you can uh, take me up to one day, one day to uh, register this new company, or it would take me up to several years. So the question is, if there are any risks, any company who wants to go into a new market will have its own calculations about the risks uh, that company is willing to take. And part of the stability is the pres availability of clear, transparent uh, uh, laws that apply to all uh, on equal uh, footing. Uh, 
uh, what is this is what we ask for this is what will uh, facilitate things and this will come out of the dialogue I know there are companies that are uh, ready to help in this because we are subject to these things in other countries for example China today is different than China th 30 years ago so we have gained some experience that we can uh, uh, benefit from any other questions it's too early in the session. People are not awake, yes. I think we, our session was scheduled for too early. The issue of integration that you talked, uh, talked about and the movement among those countries, it is not easy to move from one country to another in this uh, area. To what extent does this also uh, 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 further complicate uh, investment and how companies uh, deal with these uh, with these uh, issues. Well, I am glad as an Egyptian that I can come to Jordan without an entry visa, uh, Mr. Mohammed Samir says. Uh, in Algeria, uh, Morocco. Uh, uh, produce. I produce in Algeria, between uh, Algeria and uh, Morocco. There is a free flow of uh, products. Uh, uh, for example, if I have any minister of trade in any Arab country, uh, the problem will be solved. Uh, but it, it doesn't work this way. If every time I want to solve a problem, I need to communicate with the minister, uh, uh, cabinet, minister cabinet minister, uh, to do that, it, uh, there needs to be a law, a clear, non-ambiguous law. Uh, there needs to be some, some customs official would say, well, you don't have customs duties on this. While others would say, someone else, it is, uh, they do have, but this is, uh, these are exceptions. So I don't want these kind of surprises. We need to have things uh, that are very clear. Some talk about 5%, others take about 10%. A surprise would be a good one if I think the, uh, the percentage to be paid is 5% and it turns out to be only 2%. That's a good surprise. Um, Your Excellency talked about reforms and you said that uh, they need to be quickly. Some in uh, uh, our region want uh, try to promote the notion that reform needs to be done in a gradual met uh, manner, manner uh, that uh, if they and do not, they would not fruition early and that uh, people uh, and citizens would not uh, feel them and benefit from them on the uh, short term. Well, it is about the nature of reforms, uh, uh, Mr. Khalid uh, says. If you look at the reforms we have, uh, there was no graduation. If we talk about reforms, we feel the accumulations of the past, uh, building the experience that was built uh, from the past. We don't know what's awaiting us in the future. We are in a state, uh, like I'm talking about Tunisia today, uh, uh, we, we are not, uh, we are late in our uh, reforms, and there is a race. And if you don't move uh, uh, fast enough, you will, uh, others will pass you by. So there's a general remark. Uh, I would like to generalize. However, I have seen in many uh, countries that the biggest reforms uh, is uh, um, is to uh, the uh, to refine the uh, concept of the state uh, in the minds of people after independence there's a state that uh, plans everything, it implements everything, it monitors everything and uh, this to the, in this, in today's world, in the efficient world of today, this is not acceptable. The uh, biggest reform would be to bring back the role of a state. If we summarize that uh, in a number of uh, uh, countries, uh, even about Tunisia, the state that we found ourselves in, is that the state the, uh, is uh, the uh, monitor with its executive branch, uh, uh, meaning Everything needs to be monitored. You cannot take a step without making sure that that step is uh, lawful. It is in compliance with the law. So this does not facilitate things. It becomes rather as if you are management of prohibited things. So uh, the uh, 
a comprehensive uh, economic and political system. Uh, uh, in the political system, there is participatory act aspect. In the economic uh, uh, system, there is a role to be played by the state just to put the framework, etc. And the way things are uh, governing, governance is done is to manage facilitating and post monitoring and not in a way as if you are only the management of uh, um, the prohibited things to be done. So if we put everything in its legal framework, if you have fewer, the fewer number of legislation, the better. So you are talking about a lesser law role of the state, says Mr. Mohanad. No, it is deregulation. Of course, uh, there's, uh, if you take the countries, for example, in the United States, all whatever is not prohibited is allowed. For us, everything that is not allowed is considered prohibited. So this is a different mentality. You need to know the kind of mentality you are working with. Uh, this is uh, the state gives us everything, dictates everything. This is the uh, a political direction. This is economic direction. This is the social direction. And if I have the guarantees in my governance, in my will, in my laws, today, these days, everybody feels they are responsible themselves and they need to unleash their capabilities, their potentials. We don't need anybody to tell you where to go. If you can see how much energy we are wasting, spending two years just following administrative procedures, you are paying wages and salaries for people who don't know who uh, the taxpayers' money is paid to them in order for them to uh, uh, make put obstacles in your in your way. If just take it and change the logic of the state and what a state means and in its political, economic, and social system and the role, economic role of the state, this may be the biggest reform because you unleash all energies and all potentials because the state is not responsible for each and everything. It would release the uh, unleash the energies of each person is his or her own field. This is the biggest reform. There are other reforms, but it takes certain tracks. Uh, you don't stop and go. You don't have a milestones uh, that would stop there. And then at a year, 20 years later, you do not work on the same system. You find yourself beyond history and beyond geography. You need to change our entire system to uh, put our uh, reforms and then engage in tracks. Your Excellency, the Minister do you agree that the role of the state is so big these days and that it truly it needs to shrink and remain in the uh, uh, strategic uh, level, the role of the guarantor, as uh, said uh, Mr. Samir? Or is it true that the state decides and plans and implements everything on behalf of citizens? Do we truly need to reduce the role of the state and give a chance uh, for other forces and streams to take a decision in decision-making process in general, not only economic reform. Mr. Um, Excellency, Mr. Uh, uh, Abdus Salam Bushwarib. Yes, uh, definitely, this is uh, natural uh, that the state uh, used to uh, manage to uh, puts and removes and uh, tracks and uh, holds things accountable. This was the way we lived as peoples in this area. However, each uh, one of us found a way to get out of the situation. Now we want to change uh, to uh, change uh, the state uh, managing uh, or uh, the uh, economic aspect. Uh, of our life. In Algeria, we have tackled uh, several ways. Uh, we found several ways to get out of the situation, and we found the only way out a successful one is that state administration in this field needs to be taken out, but in a legal manner. For example, the old uh, investment law was administratively managed, meaning the role of the administration uh, uh, even in, had a role even in giving advantages and in incentives. Uh, this today, uh, through this new law, all of these incentives and advantages are codified uh, in Algeria. 
Syria, for example, if someone wants to come and invest and want to invest in the south or in the north, uh, advantages would be clearly known and defined by the law. An investor in a certain area, uh, which are considered uh, pr priority areas, uh, legally speaking, this investor, once they arri he arrives in the country, he would know that advantages and what other kinds of benefits uh, the investor would get. If we do not go this way, then the um, um, state would continue to have uh, uh, to have to administer the economy and everything. In this way, we are protecting the customer, and at the same time, we prevent the administration administration uh, from interfering in several other. Uh, uh, cases. I'm sure when a, a certain investor brings a certain product in Algeria and uh, we are working, we have uh, problems with customs, uh, with training, with uh, banks, all of these things, uh, we face it every day. And the more we go forward, the, uh, uh, the more we can reduce such problems. Uh, we still have problems. However, the role of the state as said by Mr. Mahdi, is a role that needs to be just that of guidance and that would give a strategic outlook to give uh, to the objectives that we need to achieve. In our program, we talked about 7% percentage of uh, growth uh, since 2019 to 2020. This remains to be our objective, but how can we achieve it? It, it is through all the policies we are implementing these days, especially the engagement of the private uh, uh, sector, which now creates the biggest uh, uh, revolution in Algeria. There's another aspect. Um, is when the state uh, goes out of uh, uh, administration, administering things, all the projects uh, that were structural ones, uh, such as roads, uh, railroads, uh, hospitals, universities, all of these things uh, used to be financed by the state budget. Now our new law allows the partnership, uh, public-private partnerships, uh, who will come and invest in this field uh, so that uh, the state would be saved or doesn't have to go into this uh, this uh, project. This is all hard work, but is essential, and we work on it on daily basis. Um, feel free to ask. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. As for e-commerce, as for e-commerce, particularly in North African countries, there are difficulties, as you said, in imports, in purchasing, and in all the other steps of our transactions. In the uh, re economic reform plans in North Africa, are you focusing on or are you adopting new laws or facilitations uh, of, for um, e-commerce? Mr. Juma, would you like to reply? When you have a look at the law, uh, you will find there is a logic, a logic which means that what is not allowed is prohibited. This is the law that has been applied since the 50s or 60s, and you would not find an answer. Now it's about to be changed, and the change would not only be to respond to questions that you pose today, Rather, hopefully, it will be a comprehensive uh, change to uh, based on a different logic. Uh, logic. Uh, now, there are many difficulties. Uh, we have creative, uh, brilliant uh, youth uh, working in the digital field. They also have uh, problems paying uh, using PayPal. But at the same time, there is awareness, and we are going to change things. Legislators will, I hope, uh, accelerate their work. You know that we have uh, a, a tremendous and deep uh, political transformation, and there is a big leap. Uh, you have. Uh, 
talked about this, but I want to talk about being practical and talking about uh, reforms. Uh, let us not talk about the past things. I uh, would say that if today we do not uh, uh, carry out the required uh, reforms and we do not embrace digital uh, uh, a digital revolution, uh, uh, the, uh, in the uh, industrial revolution, we did not have any um, share, let me say. But now, in the digital uh, revolution, we should not me uh, miss that. This is a leadership uh, uh, reform uh, uh, aspect. We need to keep pace with the other revolutions. The industrial revolution required very big hardware costs. The digital revolution is mostly intellectual, human resources, and these are available. If we know how to use them, how to utilize them, it will not be be a, a source of risk for us, rather a source of opportunity. We need to focus in all of the Arab countries the digital revolution. We need to introduce the reforms required. And if that is connected to laws, it will say that we are programming. No, uh, we will not miss the train. We will not miss the train. Now we are just talking. At the same time, we are having, uh, uh, we are scheduling for missing the, uh, the train. We are only talking. We are not implementing anything. <laughs> that the chance uh, uh, to miss that chance. We have some two uh, minutes remaining. Thank you. I just want to emphasize that today we have missed the industrial revolution phase, contributions of the Arab Muslim contribution to uh, um, human civilization was uh, low. Now we don't have an option. Jordan is prevent presenting a model to be a partner in writing a human civilization, and my partnership will not be in past, uh, rather in modernism. So there is a political decision, a state decision that, strategically speaking, that I cannot hold all the keys in my hand. Keys need to be distributed on state sovereignty law sovereignty, laws that are suitable for social, uh, civil society, for part, p p PPPs, and to be genuine. This reluctance by the state in order to keep the control on things will make us miss the opportunity, that chance. We are not allowed at all to miss that opportunity. opportunity. We are not modernists. Uh, OK, while we understand all our national projects, we our project is built in good citizenry, on uh, 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 good citizenship, and on other elements of uh, uh, infrastructure. But maybe our confidence, maybe we missed the train in the past. But today, if we do not enter strongly, boldly, and here comes the courage, the role of the courage of politicians and economists, and the education, the po political, civil uh, uh, dialogue, we will not only miss the train and will not be on the train. We will the uh, train. We will be uh, lost uh, forever. And I would be a criminal against my grandchildren. Maybe I am old now, but. My grandchildren have the right to uh, take this opportunity. Thank you very much. I think our time has ended, and I will give every uh, of our uh, panelists uh, a minute uh, for reforms uh, from the private sector perspective. A trade exchange is very important. I want to say very quickly that people need to be optimistic. The coming future generations, the youth, and whenever I talk to them, we talk about the region as if uh, tomorrow is, will not be there. So we need to give them some, uh, some hope. Instead of saying 15% of people are unemployed, let's say 85% are employed. So let's uh, look at the uh, full uh, part of the glass. When my father talked to me, he did not talk to me that 10 years uh, uh, um, in the future, you will not find something to eat. But I think uh, we have some encouragement to the youth, but they need some optimism in order to, for them to be able to advance. Excellency, in the same context, uh, 
each difficulty Mr. Mahdi Juma, each weakness is a source of strength. So we need to change. We have a lot of weaknesses, but I hope our future will be have a lot of strength. Um, Mr. Bushwareb, I'm saying that uh, reforms will be permanent and will be accelerating and will continue to be permanent. And the participatory decision-making process uh, is important because the decisions are important and extremely important. All stakeholders, all actors in the community, the government, uh, uh, employers, the trade union, civil society, all of us uh, need to engage in the dialogue in order to have consensus on the uh, decision that will be difficult to implement, but all these parties need to uh, engage together in order to give us something that would allow us to uh, achieve our objective. Thank you, Mr. Abdesalam Bushwareb, Minister of Industry and the Mines of Algeria. Thank you, Mr. Mahdi Juma, leader to uh, pr former Prime Minister and leader of Tunisian Alternative uh, Party in Tunisia. Uh, thank you so much. And also thank you to Mr. Mohamed Sawir, regional uh, president of Procter and Gamble in the the Middle East, uh, uh, North Africa, and India. And thank you uh, very much uh, to you, audience, and goodbye.